this morning I talked about education. How many of you are with kids? Quite, quite a few. This is really good, right? So I talked about what we're doing in the K through 12 program. It's nice to get acknowledged about this, but I, I actually want to have somebody come out someplace and actually, who, who deserves the credit, Charlie Fitzpatrick, the K through 12 leader. Amazing man, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. O almost single-handedly over the last 20-some years. Pretty with, much. with a team. Yeah, with a team. He has pioneered K-12 through GIS education with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of schools with thousands and thousands and thousands of kids. And the benefits of this are just amazing. Like the kids that were here last year from Well I Am School, the four that were here, where are they? Are they here? Oh, they're here. Roosevelt, yes. They all got scholarships to the University of California. How about that? Let's tell them. Isn't that amazing? This is results, Charlie. So he's going to introduce us to some new kids. Charlie, it's yours. Well, thanks. You've heard about Connect Ed. Everybody at Esri is really excited about this commitment to Connect Ed, and so are some pretty important people beyond the company. Anyone can use ArcGIS online. High schools, middle schools, and elementary schools have been using public ArcGIS online for several years. And as you've heard several times, and we're going to keep stressing, any K-12 school in the U.S could get an ArcGIS Online organization account for instruction for free. With that account, they can have individual student logins. They can analyze and publish data just like you guys are doing. And they can share that content either just within their own organization or out with the wider world. Second, think about a soccer ball. It's pretty simple, pretty basic, pretty straightforward. But even it takes a little bit getting used to, and a good coach helps. Same with ArcGIS Online. And this is where you come in. You can be the experienced coach. You can be the geo mentor to help a school get in the game. Now, how many GISPs are out there? Raise your hand. How many? I see a bunch. All of you and all of you who want to become a GISP can earn credit by working with a local school, thanks to GISCI. Do it. It's great for the school, it's great for the community, and it's awesome for you. Up on the screen, you can see our ConnectEd address is just connected.esri.com. And there you're going to find instructional materials and a simple form through which a school can submit a request. Our GeoMentor website is geomentor.org. And there you'll find guidance and strategies for geomentors and educators to work together. It's great, it's easy. You'll also find there a link to a map where you can submit your data so that you and the educators can find each other. Now, does it help to have a mentor? Absolutely. Every school that has been up here on stage has had a mentor working with them, including this year's school, at least to get started. Now, once this year's school got going working with projects using GIS, well, not even the sky was the limit, as you're going to hear. So let's hear their story. From the East class of Sonora Elementary in Springdale, Arkansas, please welcome fourth graders Kylie Miller and Ricky Vaughn and teacher Josh Worthy. Thanks, Charlie. These two ladies are part of our environmental and spatial technology program back at our kindergarten through fifth grade school. 
ArcGIS is just one of the many tools these kids get to use each and every day. We have kids as young as seven years old using ArcMap, ArcGlobe. They're building story maps with ArcGIS online. And they're solving big, big problems. Now, these kids, it's really cool to watch them go because they're pressing buttons, they're analyzing data, they're adding base maps. But more importantly, they're designing their future. Okay. So we're going to feature three different types of story maps. And you're going to see some of the people that we've partnered up with. We've partnered up with Walmart Home Offices out of Bentonville, Arkansas. We've received grant funds from the NASA program. We've also worked with a local secondary tech school. And we've also just completed a GIS project for our school district. It's been pretty amazing. So let's hand it over to the real stars, and they're going to show you what they've done this year. Take it away, ladies. Hi, I'm Ricky. We've been able to work on some pretty large maps with Esri software. Today, we're going to show you a three-part story map. Camp Alliance is a nonprofit organization that helps kids and families of active military soldiers. Our goal was to identify 500 Walmart store locations in relation to military population. Today, we're going to show you how we solve this problem using ArcMap, and it will show in our story map. In the purple, you can see the population of veterans in each county of the U.S. The darker purple means there's a larger veteran population, and the lighter purple means there's a smaller population. On top of that layer, we see lots of orange dots. Each orange dot represents a Walmart store. There are over 4,000 stores nationwide. Our final layer, the blue dots, each represent the 500 stores that we have selected. Armed with this data, our classmate, Morgan Bergstrom, went to the board of directors of the largest retailer in the world, Walmart, and convinced them to place the Special Camp Alliance product in 500 of their stores nationwide. This is a really cool project because we've been able to work with a local nonprofit and a large corporation. Thanks. Thanks, Ricky. Now, this is a huge, huge project. And the Camp Alliance product that we've talked about, again, is going to be in 500 Walmart stores coast to coast. And we're going to see that product roll out in early September. This is also a great opportunity because our kids were able to get a little bit of business experience with the project. But we're going to switch gears just a little bit and talk about some science. Back home, we have some kids that are absolutely nuts about weather. Okay? It doesn't matter if it's a tornado, a hurricane, uh, a blizzard, they're just they're sponges. They can't get enough. They want to learn more. And so Kylie is here, and she's going to tell you about their project. Hi, I'm Kylie. Let's scale down a little bit and look at a project involving just a couple of states. We wanted to launch a weather balloon at our school, see how high it could go, and then try and find it. In April, we launched a professional grade weather balloon which traveled through four states and ended up in Scottsville, Kentucky. It got caught up in a very active jet stream which blew over 100 miles per hour. We used our spot GPS receiver to track the balloon and record its longitude, latitude, and altitude. Now you can see the path that our balloon took. Let's switch over to Art Globe. We can even see a 3D animation of our balloon's journey. Here you can see the altitude of the balloon. There was a bit of missing data due to Spot only being able to detect altitude up to 80,000 feet. The red dots show the estimated altitude changes that our balloon made during the six hour trip. Our balloon climbed to nearly 100,000 feet and 600 miles during its flight. Since we couldn't drive all the way to Kentucky to retrieve our balloon, we reached out to a school called Scottsville High School. 
they were able to get our balloon out of a tree and, and ship it back to us. We were able to retrieve our balloon and see the temperature change during the trip. This was a pretty awesome project to work on. Thanks. I love to hear about that project every single time, but I think the best part was watching it as a teacher because it just got bigger and bigger and it was amazing to experience. I kind of wish we had partnered up with Noah, who were out here just a second ago. They, they may have been able to help us, you know, not send a balloon 600 miles out of reach, but also we may or may not have broke one or two minor aviation laws, but we're not going to talk about that. Now, this the last project we're going to show you is one that's really special because this was Kylie and Ricky's bread and butter. This was their East project for the school year. So I think you're really going to enjoy what they're going to have to show you. We've been able to use this software even on the local scale. By switching back to ArcMap, we were able to do a project that has specifically helped our school. Literacy test scores are really important in schools these days. So we partnered up with our principal to create a library on wheels that would run during the summer months so that low-income students would be able to have a book in their hand all summer long. We got a donated van by a local car dealership to serve as our mobile library. Our school has over 700 students, so we wanted to map out all of the addresses to show where our students live. Each orange dot represents a household in the Sonora Elementary Attendance Zone. Most of these dots are apartment complexes, so we literally have families sitting on top of each other on this map. As you can see, we have several distinct areas of students all over our attendance zone. By using this map, we were able to plan stops, arrival times, and even choreograph book selections that were appropriate for each student based on their reading level. Our mobile library hit the road in early June. You can see our 10 distinct stops that serve well over 700 students. We are keeping track of who's coming and how often to tell if we are making a difference. These are just a few ways we use GIS software on large and small projects in our school. Thanks. The possibilities of what kids can do are absolutely endless. Now, we had a little bit of help. And thankfully, we were able to partner up with some local GIS professionals, specifically the guys from the Center for Advanced Spatial Technology out of the University of Arkansas. Cool thing about hooking up with these professionals is they can show you the tips and tricks of the software, but you still are able to see the problem through the kids' eyes. When that happens, STEM education, education happens very easily and quickly. And I want to challenge every single GIS professional in this room that when you go home from conference this week, you form a relationship with a school in your area, even if it's just for one afternoon. Get in the classroom and show the kids how this can work and how it can affect their community. You're going to see very quickly big things can happen in a short period of time. So for Sonora Elementary and the East crew we have up here today, we just want to thank you for the opportunity to share our story. Thanks, guys. That's great. Great. <laughs> Amazing, huh? Amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. Josh, thank you. Girls. Amazing. That's great. <laughs> I don't know if you picked the details. They learned ArcMap, they learned ArcGlobe, they learned online, all of it. Is there anything else you guys want to do? Well, Jack, you know, the ladies are starting to get a little comfortable with the stage, and we have this big crowd, so I think they have one more thing they want to show you. Okay. One, two, three. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh. That's okay. <laughs> you guys. Oh, let's get a photo. 
I should get down like this, something like that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, girls. Don't forget. Okay. See you. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, girls. What an afternoon. See you later. These girls are going to be around. They have their resumes ready for you later this evening. <laughs> no question.